This conference will now be recorded. Thank you. Hey, good evening, everybody. I'm going to call the uh, Public Works Committee of October 5th, 2020 to order at 5.01 p.m. This is Ken Poisson, 6th District Councilman and Chairman of the Public Works Committee. Item two is approval of the minutes from August 3rd and September 1st. Do I have a motion to approve? Bill O'Brien, so moved. And a second from anybody, second from Ms. Dancho. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The chair votes aye, motion carries unanimously. Item three is a report of the public works director, which as always has been emailed out to all of us ahead of time. Does anybody have any questions for Mo? Um, uh, Lord, hey, oh, Bill O'Brien. Uh, Laura, sure. I heard you. Okay. Laura, I heard you first. Go ahead, Laura. Okay, um, Mo, I just wanted to ask you about the project at Paradise Green. You sent me the plans for the the clock and um, the extra parking that's going to go out there. Can you um, tell me if that's gone out to bid or? Any uh, if it, I I ha I didn't check today, but it's mm -hmm. supposed to be out to bid. Okay, I think it looks really well, cool. Mm -hmm. if, if it. Uh, if it isn't, it will be momentarily. Okay. I don't know if anybody's seen the plans, but it's it's uh, they're going to put the clock back and do some landscaping and some re, um, uh, putting in uh, pavers in the middle and then uh, some extra parking along one end of the of the green. Awesome, Bill. You were next. So yeah, even though Bill O'Brien here, I was just wondering, when do the uh, asphalt plants close for the season? Uh, typically around December 15th, but we haven't gotten word yet. Depends how cold it gets and how quickly it gets cold. Okay, so it'll be maybe a couple months yet. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Greg, did you have a question? Uh, Greg has a couple of questions, please. Go ahead, Greg. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Mo, on the uh, on the list, you mentioned uh, uh, where is it? The sewer, not the sewer, but the the water cleaning out the the water stormwater drains. Uh, it, there's one particular one. There's a park called Stony Brook Park. It's behind the gas station off Broadbridge. Okay. The storm. Drain do we know if that storm drain is on the list to be done? Or you, you can follow uh, up later. I, I will. I will. I don't know right um, now, but I'll check in the morning. I'll get back to you. Thank you. Uh, sidewalks. Yep. Um, you know, some sidewalks are funded by CDBG, some by the town. There was uh, one, the CDBG, at least that aspect, was held up because the uh, the contractor, let's say, walked away from the job. Uh, yeah. Do we have, has that contractor been replaced or the legal things resolved? Will we have chance to finish some work before the end of the uh, season? It will be finished before the end of the season. Right now, the attorneys are talking with the contractor to finish up the work that he needs to finish up. Uh, I would say the next week or so, we should have somebody on site working. We just did an inventory of what's not completed this morning. I have to get that to the attorney and they'll negotiate a settlement. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay, the next item is item four, report of the town engineer, which as always has been emailed out to us ahead of time. John, you want to take us through the uh, action items first, please? Yes, there were a number of uh, change orders that were being proposed and negotiated over the last several months, going back actually to uh, September of last year. Um, and now we're ready to recommend them. Uh, the description of each one is below in item number B, but the summary is that, it, that needs approval is at, at the top and the, the action items. Um, 
I can go through the, them individually if you want, or. Uh, yeah, let's just take them individually. Uh, so the first one, uh, there was a early on in the job, a conflict with the storm drain installation um, and the uh, town sanitary sewer pipe that uh, needed to be resolved. Um, there was several, uh, probably a day and a half worth of downtime while that uh, was re-engineered and the contractor was held up. Um, so he put in a, a claim for, for downtime. It's been reviewed and um, negotiated down to $3,120. Keep going. Um, do we need a motion on that one? Are you okay with that number? Yeah, all these have been uh, brought down, negotiated with the contractor, and brought down from the original cost, and we're, we're recommending approval. Okay, would someone like to make a motion on that one? I'll make a motion, Laura Dancho, to accept the um, settlement of $3,100 and $3,120. Is there a second? Second, Bill O'Brien. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye, motion carries unanimously. Next, John. Next item is for um, another separate in, uh, location where the, well, it's actually the same location, but a different issue. The first issue was the downtime. The second one was he had to relocate work that he had already put in to make the uh, conflict work. So this, this extra is for relocation of work that he started to put in uh, prior to knowing about the, the conflict with the, with the sanitary pipe. So this was $6,472. Hey, would someone like to make a motion to, to send this to the town council with a favorable recommendation? Uh, so Greg moved, Bill O'Brien. <clears throat> Greg will second. Okay, is there any discussion? I just wanted to clarify if this was also a negotiated reduced to a reduced amount. Yeah, every single one of these, uh, you know, these are going back to September and it took us till now to get to an approved amount to bring to you. Um, but I also should know while we're in discussion that all of these uh, approvals are, are conditional upon the, um, or we, let's say we won't, we won't be executing the, the change order until um, the, budget issue we're having is resolved but the, the the changes are legitimate but we still have some budget issues to be resolved so i just wanted to make that clear to everybody okay and aileen will note that in the minutes okay all those in favor aye aye any opposed <clears throat> chair votes aye motion carries unanimously next the next is an item to re, uh, re, remove and replace uh, curbing that was installed along uh, Orn Oak Lane. The, um, there was a uh, recessed curb there that was for emergency access uh, to the uh, healthcare facility there and um, had to be replaced. Fire Marshal caught that um, after mm -hmm. we had done the work, so we had to redo it. So that was $3,023. Hey, someone like to make a motion? Uh, Laura Dancho, motion to approve $3,023 for the Orin Oak Lane recurbing. Second, Bill O'Brien. Hey, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then the next item is um, the plans called for some catch basins John, to be. John, let me just technically finish the vote here. Uh, sure. Chair vote by motion carries unanimously. Next. Sorry, John. Sorry. Uh, the catch basins, uh, several of them, because the road is widened there, um, the catch basins were going to be converted to manholes, um, but then there was not enough um, structure there to be able to put a manhole on. So um, we put in flat top catch basins. You'll probably see them if you drive by there. They're off the curb line. 
Um, the DOT then said we needed to have heavy duty catch basin tops. So they were replaced with heavy duty catch basin tops. And then um, because the heavy duty catch basin top had a different profile from the regular duty catch basin tops, they had to be um, reset again to get to, um, so the intersection grading would be proper. Um, and it was unavoidable in that the structure, you know, the original plan was to convert to a manhole, which much, would have been a much shallower profile. Um, so we, uh, re again, reviewed these uh, with a fine tooth comb and uh, agreed with this amount. The contractor was, actually did it, the work twice and uh, the cost was $6,224. Okay, right, so we're looking for a motion to send this to the town council with a favorable recommendation. Laura Dan, for a motion with a favorable okay. recommendation. Go ahead, Greg. Yep, yeah, I'll second. Okay, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. And the last one, John, for this. The last one is related to the others because as some of this work was redesigned, we, we had to change some structures or eliminate a structure um, to make it all work. And we had some structures left over. We had catch basin tops, manhole tops, um, catch basin structures uh, left over, and they couldn't be restocked. The uh, manufacturer wouldn't take them back. Um, the town really didn't have a use for them. So we are um, forced to either leave them there where they are on the side of the road or have the, the contractor um, remove them from the site. And then we have to pay him for the materials because he did purchase them under this contract. So that work is $5,514. Okay, so we need a motion to approve, send to the town council with a favorable recommendation. Bill O'Brien, so moved. Laura Danchev, second. Hey, is there any discussion? Um, is there nothing else we could do with this brand new stuff? Like there's no other place in town it could be used, it can't be recycled or any of that? It just gets... Well, we, we can, you know, the town didn't feel that we had a need for it. Um, it is um, not suitable to be returned to the, to the manufacturer's place. So we'd still have to pay for the materials. A lot of this is just paying for the materials, but then they have to be moved um, and stored somewhere, you know, or demolished. So there is a cost to that as well. Sounds like we just... And John, what, what exactly were they? Were they all different stuff or was it all the same stuff? Yeah, like I said, we had to, the original plan was to have some manhole conversion. So they had some manhole tops left over. Um, and then I think we let, we uh, were able to avoid a, a catch basin. So we had an extra catch basin left over, so that kind of stuff. It's not all one unit. There's a couple different pieces that we didn't need. All right, and Mo, we can't use this anywhere else in town? Typically, no, because we're using light duty uh, structures. Can't sell them to another town? Does anybody have no. a little tag sale? Well, again, we still have to pay for them, so that's part of this cost. And then, you know, we'd still have to handle them and move them and see if somebody else wants them. You know, there's time involved with that, whether it's the contractor doing it or us doing it. Right. And are these light, the light duty ones? These would be um, the light duty, um, some light duty tops and manhole tops and, so, and a catch basin structure or a piece of a structure, not necessarily a whole structure, but like a riser section. You know, and, not the whole well, structure. We well, we can't use any of that, even the lightweight ones? If, if, if you desire that we take them, we'll, we'll take them and store them and try and use them. But right now, we have no need for them. If you want me to pick them up, we'll pick them up.
Oh, we'll see what the what the committee. What do you what do you think we should do with these? I'm I'm thinking that if this is brand new, this is brand new material, right? That we paid for. And it ended up being an incorrect piece. Conveniently, the manufacturers decided they're not going to have a return policy on unused material. We have the expense of removing it and storing it. I don't know. I'm just thinking if it's if it's new, we should keep it and figure out if there's anywhere else to use it and then give it a period of time and then, I don't know, um, I guess then just dispose of it. It just seems like a huge waste to me. I agree. This is Bill O'Brien. I don't understand why. Uh, let me let me uh, let me let me make it easy here. We'll we'll pick it up and take it and store it at the yard. Pay for the material and then we'll store it and try and use it someplace. Thank you. That's that's what that's my opinion. I don't know if anyone else has a different opinion. No, sounds good. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. John, was there anything John, on? Uh, go ahead, Mo. Uh, John, let them know that uh, we'll pick them up uh, when when they're ready to be taken off site. Yeah, I'll let the contractor know. So, but just to clarify that motion, this is it fair to say you approve like a not to exceed amount for this amount? And then we'll figure out what the cost difference is between the material costs and the, the handling costs. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. I, but absolutely. I made motion, correct. I can't remember if I did this one. Yes, motion amended to not to, not to exceed $5,500. Okay, thank you for that, John. Is there anything on the B, West Broad? Uh, no, we did not get a price uh, for that uh, retaining wall yet, um, so we will bring it to you next month. Okay, and any uh, highlights that we should know about for the rest of the report that we have in front of us? Um, the West Broad Street project um, is being somewhat delayed by the um, util lack of uh, having the utilities uh, moved and relocated out of our way. Um, so we will be, the contractor has requested a time extension um, for that reason and a couple other things that happened during the job. We lost, well, lost a little time, some extra work. Not to mention the extra work we approved last month um, including this ready rock wall, and which we haven't approved yet, and the uh, impact attenuator, which we approved last month. Um, that is all going to extend the contract time. Um, we're looking to still complete, to have substantial completion this um, this construction season, but his contract will be probably extended past uh, the current contract date. Um, so there will be some costs associated with that. Uh, which we don't have those costs yet to tell you, but it, I just want to alert you to that effect. And what is the current date right now? The current date is uh, was Thursday, last Thursday. And we're looking at uh, weeks or months? We're looking to um, the end of the construction season, so December 1st uh, is what we're, we're thinking. It might go to December 15th. We still might be um, doing some wrap-up work or, or paving work if the, if the weather is, is decent. Um, the contractor can't really amend his schedule yet because he doesn't know when the utilities will be out of his way so that he can then program the rest of that work that needs to be done. Uh, in the meantime, he is working, but he's not working on those things that are critical path. So we, we we have reported on this before. We knew it was coming, but you know here we are now. So. Hey John, this is Bill O'Brien. I'm just wondering about Linden Avenue. Any thoughts on getting that paved soon? That's in, pre that's in pretty bad shape. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's working on the I-95 ramp right now, and uh, the plan I think is for him to when he finishes the I-95 ramp. Um, he'll have his uh, paving equipment then on site, and he'll start working on I-95 ramp, then Linden, and then out into West Broad Street. Thank you. 
Yes, I think a lot of people are looking forward to getting that road paved, Bill. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people were surprised by that little island that's over there on Linden. But hopefully it all comes together. Yeah. <laughs> and that new, um, that new stop, uh, that's permanent? The, I'm sorry? The stop sign? That new stop sign? The new stop sign permanent at the end of the island? No, that there will be a traffic light, a new traffic light at the end of the uh, I-95 ramp, so that all that traffic will be controlled by traffic light. Oh, good. That's a dangerous intersection. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other, uh, you know, I don't want to go through every item unless you want me to, but um, w you know, one um, important item I just want to bring your attention is the underground tank. Uh, underground storage tank. Um, I, I listed the locations where we're proposing to remove the uh, underground tanks. Uh, this is under item K. Um, so we are moving forward with a, a design project to uh, bid out the removal of all those tanks. And um, there'll be more to report at our next meeting. Okay. Hey, does anybody have any questions for uh, John? Okay, thank you, John. Oh, uh, Ken, I apologize. It's Greg. Yes, Greg. Uh, John, which entity may be holding up Stratford Avenue Honey Spot Road project? Um, right now, we are waiting for the Aquarian Water Company to move two hydrants and to re complete the replacement of their uh, water mains at the intersection of California Street and um, Knowlton intersection. And then separately, the um, UI um, overhead wires need to be relocated to the new poles so that they can pull out the old poles. So the old poles are in our way, the hydrants in our way. And the uh, water main work has to be done before we can redo the, the road reconstruction. Um, are those related to the, the rotary at Stratford Avenue and Honeypot? No, different different project. Right. Um, so we were back on West Broad. Is in regards to the the rotary on Stratford Avenue, is it private landowners or is it government? that may be holding up that project? Um, right now, we are waiting for the state to comment on our property maps uh, for the taking of the right-of-way and um, the final decision on the intersection of um, Spada Boulevard and um, Honey, uh, Honey Spot Road. Uh, we're, we're, we're asking the state to make some changes to that intersection so we don't have to put a light in which the state doesn't want to light, so we're just waiting for them to say it's okay. And uh, then we're also waiting for UI to give us a lighting design for uh, pedestrian scale lighting that will be used for lighting at the ADA handicap ramps. Um, and the state uh, is not approving the plan until we have a lighting diagram that will show that the pedestrian crossings will be properly lit. So that's, those are the three obstacles right now to moving forward. Not to, no, and then, of course, the finalize, finalization of the right-of-way. Once the DOT approves the map, we have to finalize with the private property owners. Hmm. Okay. Um, a lot to coordinate. Thank you, John. Yep, thanks. Okay, thank you, John. Item six is uh, new business. Does anybody have any new business before we get on to what's listed on the agenda? Play the 2021 meeting schedule has been um, graciously put together ahead of time by the best secretary ever. And we're going to keep the meetings on the first Monday at five o'clock, except for the three that are noted on the schedule there. Uh, because of holidays and the mayor's golf tournament. So if everybody's good with that, we'll take a motion to approve the 2021 meeting schedule. Laura Hello, Dan. Brian, motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. 
Okay, is there any discussion? No, uh, just special thanks for changing to the 5 p.m. time. It's been much better this year. Yes, it's worked out well. Uh, sometimes myself and Aileen and Margo are under the gun to get over to the Stratford High meeting at 5.30, um, but I think everybody agrees that the five o'clock time is better. Do you agree, Mo? I do, it's fine, thank you. And John, the five o'clock is good for you? Yeah, much better, I agree too. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item seven is adjournment. Anybody? Uh, be, uh, Bill O'Brien, before before we adjourn, Aileen or Ken, is the next meeting? It's the same uh, same go to meeting uh, number. Yes, uh, it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, and so you other, don't really have. Yeah, nobody has to leave if you're staying on. That's no. just Margo's gonna hit no, and report. No, no, it's not. It's different. It's not. It's a different it's number. Always a, it's always a separate number for Stratford High and building needs. Yeah, those are the two that are the same. Stratford High and building needs are the same, and Public Works has its own. Okay, thanks. I'll get it on the website. Oh, uh, then, this is Greg. Eileen, um, Eileen or Margo, could you forward me the the call the number for the building needs, please. Or guys, you got it, Aileen. Um, I'm just texting you. There's a problem because the access code for the Stratford High and Building Needs is the same for Public Works. Oh, I have to agree. Okay, so, so let's, finish, let's just finish this technically. Uh, the motion to adjourn is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And thank you very much, everybody. We are adjourned at 5.28 p.m. Thank you. I'm this go conference ahead and, uh, will now be recorded. Get it started. All right, good, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call us to order here at uh, 5.47 uh, p.m. Uh, just a quick reminder, we don't need to go through the um, the roll call um, and the other introductory statements. We can just uh, get rolling right to it. So if you haven't already, please mute your phones unless um, you're speaking or called on to speak. Um, but that having been said, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our regular September 1, 2020 meeting. So moved, so moved Bob Thank you, Bob Shalou. Is Bob there a Shalou. second? All right, who, who's the motioner on that? Dan Semt, I'll second. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Danny. Um, any changes, corrections to the minutes? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Hearing none, Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. The minutes are approved. Um, Councilman Poisson, want to give us under item three a quick uh, town council update? Yeah, at the last meeting, we uh, approved what is hopefully the last of the uh, asbestos removal uh, change order. All right, excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Um, that'll move us on to item four, which is the project financial update. Um, Paul, I'll be uh, turning it over to you at this point. Paul, are you there? Thank you, Ellen. Um, good evening, everyone. Before I go for, uh, through the budget tonight, I just want to put the committee an update on the student reimbursement. Today, we I can't for... really hear Paul. Can anybody else hear Paul? Yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul, if Paul, if you have, uh, if you're talking with your phone, then mute your computer, or uh, if not, go uh, go vice versa. But I think there's feedback from your uh, devices being so uh, close together. Alan, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, so I do not have my phone anymore. This is just so we do computer. Hold on, Paul. If everybody else, if you're calling in, if you can mute your phones, because we're getting a lot of background noise from people who are on phones also. Thank you, Dan. Can everyone hear me? Yes. All right, here we go. So quick update on state reimbursement. To date, we have applied for 57 million um, for state reimbursement to the grant for the school construction grant. Out of that 57 million, the state is holding 11%, which is about 6.3 million. On 90, on 10 one, we applied for our labor straw down for 8 million. And after the 11 percent is taken out, the town should be getting a check for around 7.1 million. On October 2nd, Craig met with Kermit Thompson from the, the school construction grant review, and we have a a uh, meeting to to review the change orders to move those forward. Kermit is finishing up two other projects, and we are on third on his uh, agenda for projects to review the change orders to date. So we can get answers on all the change orders from change order five to sixteen. Mr. Chairman, what? we cannot understand Paul whatsoever. Really? Okay. Right. Paul, can you try talking like directly into your computer microphone? And then, and then people who are on phones, if you can, please, uh, please mute your phones. I, I'm hearing a lot of feedback and there's a lot of uh, interference as people have been commenting. So, Alan. Yes, Paul. I am going to call in on my phone because I think the, the service is better that way. All right, then just mute the just mute the computer so that you don't get any uh, any interference. Paul, Paul, you need to mute something. I can mute it. Mute it. Paul, Paul, you also need to turn your speakers off on the computer. I just left. I did shut my speakers off. It still picked up frequency. All right, so I'm just on audio now, so everybody can hear me clearly. Is that the case? Yes. Okay, so thank you for your patience, everybody. So what I what I was saying before, before I go through the budget, I wanted to give the committee an update on the state reimbursement. So to date, we have <clears throat> applied for $57.8 million for reimbursement to the state construction grant. <clears throat> Excuse me. Out of that 57.8 million, the state is holding 6.3 million, which is 11 percent um on let me see here on 10 one we just submitted in and in in was subsequently approved a eight million dollar application so the town should be receiving a 7.1 million dollar reimbursement check uh within the next couple of weeks uh, and that is with 11 percent being held last friday correct met with the office of school construction grant and review to discuss the change orders. So far, they have reviewed change orders one through four, and they still need to review five through 16. So the office, Kermit Thompson, replied to our request and, and stated that we are third on their list. He has two schools to, to finish, and then Stratford will be the, the next school. So we, we hope to get through the remainder of the 
stay change orders um, in a timely fashion. Any questions on that before I move on to the budget? Hearing none. So Paul, Paul, one second, just before you move on. I just want you to ex explain that the change orders that you guys present to the state are kind of like a collection of, of Turner item numbers. So although we may be up to, you know, two seven, you know, in the in the two hundreds, that the um the change orders as you present to the to the state are actually like collections of subgroupings of change orders. That, that's that right, Alan. So every state or every state change order is an accumulation of change orders uh, for a period of time that is compiled into one document and then sent up to the state for review. So let, okay, let's say state change order number state change order number one was Turner change order one through twenty. And that was submitted as one change order to the state. Change order number two was 21 through 45. So to that likeness, Chairman. Okay, thanks, Paul. You're welcome. This is Dawn. I, I do have a question about that. Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, go ahead, Dawn. So, um, Paul, the change orders, when they go through them, they're looking for allowable unallowable costs is that what they're looking for or are they just rubber stamping them or could you uh, they they do not rubber stamp them Don. they go through them on the first four that we um that kermit has reviewed already he red lines all of them and has questions and then the district has one more chance one more bite at the apple per se to challenge his comments um and then and then they make a final decision on on the um the total amount for reimbursement. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No, nope, move forward. Here Paul. Okay, hearing none. Thank you, Chairman. Sorry about the pause. All right, moving forward on the budget. So, after reconciling and getting the budget up to date, um, there are line items throughout the budget that within the next month I'll come before committee and let the committee know where there's surpluses that we can bring down to owner's contingency. Um, but as of right now, we are standing at three. $308,000 in owner's contingency. But I do see some some lines here that um, may be able to be brought down. Any questions on the budget? All right, hearing no uh, uh, questions. I do have a question. Oh, okay, Dan. So, um, Paul, is there a chance, based on what I'm seeing here, we're at 100 and what is 106 million at this particular point? Yes, yes, Dan. And on a with a budget of 120, almost 126 million, is there a chance that we will be over budget upon completion so, of the project? Dan, at this point, I w I would say no. Um, you know, for a couple reasons, um, and, and I think I can kind of chime in here now. I was going to save this for later during the photovoltaic conversation, but you know, I, I almost see it, it would be nice for the town if they do choose to have the, the PV taken out of this project and to go and have it bundled into a future project that the town is working on now. Um, which would be more cost effective for the town. One could one one could say that this 950 is is a contingency on top of the contingency. However, it, it would look optically for this committee. It would look good if the committee returned this full funding back to the town so they could use this bucket of money for that portion um, future high school PV project. Um, 
And, and then, Dan, we have – there's some money in CM contingency that would have to be, you know, kind of a conversation between Turner and the town on what could be released back to the town for use. But I, at this point, Dan, I do not see us going over budget. Great. Thank, thanks, Paul. I appreciate that. You bet. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, Mr. Fredette. Uh, through you to Dawn, if Dawn uh, agrees with all that, does it does that make sense to her? What I just understood was that you're saying the 950 for future solar that you're not you are suggesting it's not under this project that it would be a separate project and um, I. I don't have an answer if that makes sense right now. I'd have to review Don, that. Don, I think, I think is that my question is whether we're going to go over budget. In your in your opinion, Don, I think am I right in asking that, Rich? Uh, does this all make sense? That well, Dawn is our numbers lady here. Uh, I I just you know would like her to be confirming or at least disputing if, uh, where you stand with all that. And if she's okay with that, then okay. Okay. Yeah, and just um, if I can dovetail off of that, um, Mr. Fredette, uh, Don and I, this budget's not done in a vacuum. Um, I, I rely on Don uh, for information off the GL so I can roll it into this particular budget. And she does a fantastic job on providing that information. Um, in real time so I can get you guys the numbers for each meeting. Okay, I'm good with all that. And and just to clarify one other thing, Paul, this does include the COVID related expenses, right? I know they're not segregated <laughs> out, but they're in there, right? Yes, Don, they are. Okay. All right, Paul, does that conclude your uh, financial update? If there are no more questions, Chairman, yes, that concludes my update. All right, is there still interest in taking uh, an item out of order? I, um, I would ask the committee to take an item out of order, Chairman. Okay. So what's uh what's that item that we're looking to shift, Paul? So Chairman, we have um we have asked Stantec to join the meeting tonight last minute so they could answer, help the design team and the project team as a whole help answer any questions related to the athletic field. Um so item number nine. Nine. Uh we're we're respectfully asking the committee to motion to move that item up to item number Number five. five. Thank you. <laughs> okay. There, a, a motion to move item nine up to num item five, make it the next item we talked about on the agenda this evening. Okay. I make that motion, Janet Robinson. Second, Richard. Okay, so All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously, and we are currently going to start a discussion on the uh, on the on-campus athletic field. Um, so, Paul, before we bring this open to general questions, do you want to kind of run through things with the consultants and kind of bring us up to where we are today? Sure. So, in the last few months, Chairman, um, the design, the project team as a whole has been working on getting this. Um, athletic field up and running for end users to use. Um, we we um, we as we're moving forward, there was a couple of items noticed by um, the stakeholders and end users that um, I, gu I guess weren't articulated enough to to their understanding, Chairman. Uh, one of those items being the um, the angle on King Street. 
so this this fenced in area the curving of this fenced in area is not a perfect rectangle um, the the angle on King Street follows King Street and then and then the uh, southwest or southeast angle um, is, is near 90 so the the north sorry the northeast angle is near 90 the southeast angle is near 90 um, and then the um, the two west angles are are obtuse and acute uh, by about so, a degree maybe one 1.5 degrees one degree something like that for the angle yeah, at King Street mm -hmm. yeah. so the, the original grass field did follow the, the, the property line and and then we switched the grass field um, to we 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 chose um, we we chose to upgrade from a, a grass field to an athletic synthetic turf field and we went forward with the price adjustment, the change order, and then we also went forward in trying to expand this field as, as much as we could by getting rid of some trees and, and some outside grassy areas. Uh, during this whole process, Chairman and the committee, um, that, that angle stayed that angle uh, on King Street. So even when we got into field markings and we, we were set on on what the field was going to be U10. The, the U10 was a U10, but then the surrounding maroon area, the warning track, so to speak, uh, was not perfectly rectangle. Um, so there was that chairman, and there was also the the crown in the field that that a lot of people noticed uh, and have quite frankly issue with. Um, so, so today, I wanted to have the whole design team here in 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 Crack and Turner before the committee to to answer any questions we can to to kind of um, work through this. Okay, Lisa here. I would just like to check quickly and make sure Antonio made it onto this call, which I heard via text, but I want to make sure. Yeah, yes, I'm on, Lisa. Okay, great. Um, would would you like to start talking about the uh, the crown that's in the field and the history of that within the design and its relationship to natural grass? Yeah, I mean, I can I can touch upon that a little bit. So, um, the the direction that we were given was to you know maximize the turf as much as possible um, with with this field, and and that's you know basically what what we did here. Um, the issue is that we obviously had uh, constraints here. We had a driveway to the north and a parking lot to the east and a road you know, to the west and a private property to the south. So when we start to maximize that and push those limits, we, we are up against previously the design site elements that really could not be tweaked uh, very much at that point. Um, so the general grading of the field is mostly governed by the surrounding areas which were already designed and were not going to be changed significantly because we had drainage structures that were in and things like that. And, um, and you know, it would have taken significant rework to, to not meet the grades surrounding the field. Um, so you know, we basically held, we held the grades that had to be held surrounding the field. We checked to make sure that it was within acceptable range, which it is. None of the grades on the field are more than 2%. I think it's mostly like one and a half percent, which as far as um, uh, sports fields go, you know, is reasonable. Um, and there are, you know, the turf fields that we do design, a lot of them do have a, a crown and different kind of grading. That's just, you know, that's the way it is. With a lot of fields, especially when you have a multi-use field where you have different kinds of sports that are being played, um, there isn't a perfect grading that works for all. Um, so that is basically the history of you know how the grades came upon. If you look at the driveway, that is essentially where the you know where the high point of the driveway is, when that area really had to be held um, in order to make all the site elements surrounding it you know work. I have a question, Mr. Taylor. 
All right, just give me uh, give me one second. Lisa, is there anything that you want to add before I, I kind of start opening this up to questions? And also, um, when are we going to lose um, uh, Tony from Stantec? Um, I think Antonio will stay on as long as as long as he can. Um, I'd also just like to throw in when when Antonio and I discussed this earlier, um, a crown in the middle of a natural grass field is required. And Antonio, you were telling me that Stantec generally puts crowns in the middle of their turf fields because at, at a high level of play, they like they like to see the field look like it would if it were natural grass. Correct. Yeah. That is, and that, yeah. All right. Yeah, so, okay. um, Danny, Danny, I'm kind of going to let the let yeah, you so go first in terms of the uh, the questions here. I think the question I have for Antonio is this: first of all, you know, myself, um, Mr. Poisson, have done some extensive coaching throughout the areas, and I don't know of one field with um, artificial turf that's crowned. If you can give me some examples in our particular area where you have crown fields, I could see it on natural turf where you need to crown the the field for drainage, but I know up at Benell High School right now it's not crowned. Um, we have uh, we we recently well I don't know how recent it is um, Harding High School uh, we did we did Harding High School and that's a um, we did a football field there and we did a um, a baseball field there and I believe the football field is crowned. I mean it's a slight crown and it's not across. It's not like this because this one is not necessarily symmetrical because we have to meet the grades surrounding the field. Um, but we certainly will pitch the field and crown it at half a percent to one percent, generally speaking, for you know high school fields, for college fields, and things like that. Fields like this that are you know U10 or smaller or practice fields, the, the grades are not as critical. Um, and again, um, it's you know we really our our hands were were really tied as far as a lot of the surrounding grades. Um, but yeah, no fields are def they definitely pitch and they're definitely crowned. Not all necessarily the same way. Um, we don't typically have dead flat fields. I got that. And listen, I'm 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 just wondering if there's any effects, negative effects, with a crown um, artificial turf field as opposed to uh, natural turf. I don't know if there's a negative effect necessarily. I mean, a lot of times we will pitch it to, you know, to prevent, you know, filling or walls on another side. Um, you know, you can have a 1% or half a percent pitch in one direction or another. Um, it really depends on the site. Um, but I can tell you that the majority of our fields have some kind of pitch and crown to them. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Right. Yep, go ahead, Mr. Fredette. I'm gonna be a little less forgiving than Mr. Senf. Pender's field, flat as can be. I was up at Benell today taking pictures, flat as can be. I can't find this acceptable. Uh, I questioned this month ago, two months ago in regards to a pitch. The whole thing looked off to me then. I was assured by Paul that it was going to be straightened out. It was going to be taken care of. And now we have a crown in there. It sounds to me like we're getting snowballed somewhere. I, I, I find this totally unacceptable. What are we going to do to straighten this out? Or who's responsible for it? Because that's not what we as the town of Stratford have paid for. But like I said before, this was the direction we were given was to maximize the field as much as possible. And I don't think anyone would have wanted to, you know, tear out the driveway or, you know, have a, a five foot wall on one side of the field. That's pretty much what would have been required if you were to want this to be dead flat. Um, so either that or you could have had, I guess, a you know, 10 foot grass buffer around it to try to make up the grades. But, you know, given the fact that we wanted to maximize this as much as possible, um, you know, that's that's what 
you know, had to happen here. This, you know, and the whole time that we were designing the field, the, the direction was that this was a just a field for gym class to play on and for practice. It was never until way, way late in the game did we find out that this was going to get striping and it was going to be more of a formal field. That was way after the fact that we found that out. Um, the whole, you know, time, you know, that we were designing this thing, we, we understood that it was just going to be a practice field. Um, and, I, you know, so. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and argue all night about it, but I don't believe the children in a phys ed class deserve any less than what we've paid for right from the beginning. And if we were to be told right from the beginning that certain things had to be done to make this thing flatter, we were in, the, I believe, we were under the intentions of putting in a flat field. And that's why I questioned the slope two months ago, a month ago, whenever, you know, Aileen will be better off telling us exactly when I questioned it. But uh, it's, again, not what we paid for. So um, to lend a little history to the discussion of the grades around the field, I did some checking today. The change order was approved in May for the turf field changeover. And at that time, the curbs were set for the driveway. Okay, well, I, I appreciate all the, the maximum of what we did. I walked through it with Ken and with uh, Paul and uh, several times made site uh, reviews with that never once did anybody say well you're going to end up with a crown on this field never once did anybody say it was going to have a slope to this field i thought that that was all that additional drainage over uh on the king street side and the uh the driveway side that we put in was all for that <laughs> Rich, Rich, do you have more? Uh, do you have more questions? I'll have more questions point, or... as they come up with more uh, excuses. All right. Well, it's uh, it's just uh, not right, Alan. You know, and I think no. they're taking advantage of us, and I don't like it. No, I think um, you know, we did give direction to have there be maximum maximum coverage of the of the site, but I think in all of our minds, we were getting you know, a field similar to Pender's, we were getting, you know, another banal. So I don't know, you know, where the, you know, for lack of a better word, where the disconnect is. But um, Rich, if you're set with questions for now, I'd like to kind of let, um, you know, let Ken get involved, um, ask some questions as well. As as Danny Semp said, him and Ken have been, uh, you know, coached on fields and, and worked their way through you know, a bunch of uh, Stratford's turf fields. So, um, Ken, I'd like to get uh, get your thoughts and your concerns at this point. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think um, perhaps what we have here to borrow a line from a famous movie is a, a failure to communicate. Uh, when we asked for the turf field to be maximized, nobody came back to us and said, the curb's already done, the driveway's already done, and there's gonna be a slope, there's gonna be a crown. What if that driveway was bigger than it is now? Would the crown have been bigger? Antonio, you said that that slope on that field is 2%? Uh, max, yes. That's that's 2%? Yes. And now I don't know construction and I'm not gonna pretend to know construction, but to my naked eye and to Danny's naked eye, that looks like way more than 2%. No, that should be two percent for the plants. That's I double I checked that to make sure that was kind of what we were looking at. Is there any way we can get that verified, Tim or yes. Paul or Lisa or somebody? <laughs> I mean, I could let Tim speak to that, but I think you guys do an as-built survey um, follow-up anyway. Is that correct? Yes, this, uh, I mean, we could check grades. We can bring a surveyor in and check the grades on this. We can ask for the as built to the final field, which we'll get. Um, so, you know, again, I have to look at the specs to see if that's required. I don't know if there was an as built to the field required. Um, 
but you know, either way, we could bring a surveyor in to uh, pull grades if uh, that's what is requested. I just, I just wish that, like Rich was kind of inferring that maybe we could go back in time and more information could have been given. It seems like it was one way we asked for the field to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we did so many things and moved so many things and got rid of so many things and added so many things. Uh, to maximize the use of the, the area so it was all turf. Um, at no point did we know that it was going to end up looking like this. Uh, I was expecting a flat level field, just like there is at Benel, at the new field that they're building at Benel right now, just like at Penders. Um, and Antonio, you're correct, they do have a slight slope. Most turf fields have half of 1%, and that's over 120 yards over the whole length of the field. This is only 70 yards by 60 yards, and there's no reason for it to have a 2% slope, except that we had to tie it into the curb or the driveway or the sidewalk or whatever else and end up with four corners that weren't 90 degrees that also should have been caught and corrected in my opinion. That's, co that's correct. I mean, if we were in a vacuum and we're designing this field in the woods somewhere, it wouldn't be graded like this, obviously. So then why is it acceptable now? Well, because we have to meet the grade surrounding surrounding the field. That was that was, there was, the, no, there, was that, no work there was absolutely no workarounds to that. The workaround to that would have probably been maybe walls on three of the four sides, possibly, and possibly a variance for the the southern wall. Um and or you know, tearing out previously constructed work. And even then, you know, it would have been difficult because the things, you know, the driveway is graded, it's all tied to the finished floor elevations. So um, it would have required significant rework of the site, I think. But nobody ever came back to us and told us that the field's going to have a crown. Uh, understood. But I think, I don't think, um, it was I maybe it wasn't it wasn't clear to me that that is maybe what the expectations were here again you know from the very beginning this was going to be just an area for practice and gym class and that was you know that was my understanding of it until I started seeing striping and things like that which was way late in the game I had no idea this was going to be a you know a formal field uh so right. I'm just like, being just honest like with you you know whether, whether it turned into a, an athletic field for nighttime and weekend use or not, there still was no need for it to have a crown, except that it had to tie into the surrounding areas. But it, you just said that if you were building this field from scratch, it would not have a crown. No, it, it would have a crown. It would, it would have a crown that it would be probably slightly less, you know, than that. It would definitely have a crown because they all have a slight, a slight crown, but yeah, I mean, like I said before, that what's governing this was the, you know, the surrounding area. That was, you know, we were we were basically putting a field um, on a school site. This was not a field project. This was a school project. Right, you know, but that had a field. Antonio, is it is it accurate to say that when you were given the instructions to maximize the turf area, that no one ever came back to us and told us the field wasn't going to be flat? and level and it was going to have a crown is that correct uh yeah I, that's... I thought we discussed a pitch in general from the driveway to the neighboring property less so than a crown but um i remember talking to you guys about the grades because we have the 39 down at the neighbor's driveway and we're closer to 40 at the northern edge Danny, have you ever seen a field that has this much of a crown on it? No, and I think my concern is the fact that, listen, um, obviously Antonio's company has done a significant amount of work throughout the area, right? And when you're given plans and you're presented with um, a footprint of what you have to work with, I would have assumed there would have been some conversations between um 
his company as well as uh, Antonazzi in regards to um, the pitch and some of the constraints that they had in this, you know, field project. So, you know, whether or not that discussion took place between the two companies, you know, I don't know, but it seems like it would have been brought up if there was a, a pitch that was as great as this was, you know, and, and the excuse of it being just a practice field to me really has no bearing. Um, you know, whether it be a practice field, whether it be a regular field, um, we would assume that um, all fields would be comparable, you know, based on what we've already had in town. Now, if you're telling us, Antonio, that this pitch isn't going to make a difference, it's not going to affect the performance of, of the turf, um, you know, that's, that's all fine and well, but I think you know, when you get things after the fact, um, it creates some anxiety and some angst on everybody's part. You know, we're spending a lot of money for the school project and every time we've got to go back and look at things that have already been done that we see uh, at times are not correct, um, it, it creates some some problems because it's a, it's a big project and there's a lot of money that's involved and a lot of concerns. And, you know, our goal is to make sure that we've got the best quality products, we're using the best contractors, and that these projects are going to last a lifetime. So, um, you know, that's it. Mr. Chair, Mrs. George, if I can chime in for just a second. <clears throat> um, yeah, absolutely, George, go ahead. I don't, I don't want anybody to think that there was any intention of doing any wrong here which is sort of what's been insinuated. The, you know, we work really hard with you folks to try to get as big of a field as we can. And just as maybe we didn't come and say there was gonna be a crown, not flat. I'm not sure that anybody said it was supposed to be flat, not crown. And I'm not saying that's an excuse or, or a complaint or anything. All I'm saying is that I think the entire team, owner and design team included, you know, did, did the best we can with the situation that we have. I just, while we were talking, while I looked at the comments, I went on site to the um, Sports Turf Management Association, and it says, you know, one way to achieve proper drainage for a football, soccer, and other fields is to create a crown, and then it go, football, rugby, soccer, field hockey, and lacrosse is to create a crown, and then the other way is to have a left to right slope. So I don't think any wrong has been done here. I think what might be happening to some extent is that because this field is so small, I think the crowd is being exaggerated. You know, we don't have 100 yards by 50 yards or whatever the case may be. So I think what's happening is that it's, it's sort of, you know, magnified something that is, I'm going to say, more or less the norm. We happen to, we did Harding High School. I'm not sure how many people knew that. And by design, we, now there we had a site, if anybody knows the OGE site, that was, for all intents and purposes, perfectly flat. But we chill, still chose to do a crown um, football soccer field there. So, I, and again, I'm not trying to make an excuse, not to try and blame any blame, um, put any blame on anybody. I'm just saying that I think all of us put together did the best what we can. What I think would be important though is just to make sure um, is to you know have a survey go out there to um, make sure that the grades have been met to the design intent. Um, to make sure that for whatever reason it didn't get exaggerated when the turf company, I can't remember the turf company's name, but when they sort of took over from their rough grading that Terma did and you know had to do their thing of subsoil and sub um, base and stuff, that maybe something didn't happen, you know, that, from that point of view. Um, and that's basically all I have to say. Now the field was like that before field turf got there because we all saw it. Like Rich said, he saw it two months ago. No, I'm not saying that it wasn't there, uh, Ken. I'm saying that maybe when, as they were doing it, you know, the shovel got heavy on one side and the other. And I'm not sure. Again, all I'm saying is that I think, at a minimum, to respond to Dan's concern, is that and I don't believe we've done anything that's not going to be safe at all. Um, you know, we we their practice fields. It's uh, not a again not a full football field. So let's find out um, what we have, and then uh, we can respond from there. 
Well, well Paul or Al, I don't know if one of you guys can answer. If we have to bring surveyors out, who's who's going to pay for this? Are you asking me, Ken? Oh, uh, whoever whoever yeah, can yeah, answer. Yeah, Paul, yeah, you, Alan. yeah, Paul. I was gonna. Yeah, Paul. I was gonna defer this. Um, defer this over to you. Okay. So. So Tim will Tim will look at the spec to see what is owed, and if it's not owed, we go forward and get a, a survey done. And if it's it's two percent or less, then the the owner pays for it. If it's two percent or more, then we we have another conversation. Guys, this is Antonio. The um, there an asphalt is required. They did an asphalt for the um, the west parcel, so I'm assuming that a, a an, asphalt, an asphalt survey for the east parcel will be done. It's included as part of the project. Okay. And when will that, when will that be? Yeah. I will have to check Ken to see where they are with that. They typically will finish the, you know, finish all the curbing and whatnot before they come shoot final grades to do the A2 survey. So I will check with them to find out uh, when we expect to have that in our hands. Okay, thank you. Uh, just lastly, George, I don't want you to take that the wrong way. My point is communication. That's that's the point. I'm not pointing fingers at people and saying that uh, you know there's some, been some collusion here. I just feel that the more, the more that you can communicate with us prior to these things happening, the less, the less uh, you have issues down the road. And I just don't think this was communicated properly. And I think that's what Kenny's upset about also. That was it. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree, Danny. I don't, I, nobody's trying to, to blame anybody or, or accuse anybody of doing anything on purpose. I think we all noticed that it was on level and there was a crown uh, months ago and it didn't become crystal clear until the turf got laid down because then you see a football line, a soccer line, a lacrosse line kind of going up a hill and, and disappearing on the other side of the hill. And that's when it became very apparent. Obviously, way, way too late in the game. And like Danny just said, if we had had a little more communication, um, you know, it could have been fixed. We could have had some workarounds. We could have discussed it. We could have, you know, maybe made some other decisions. So we would have had, a, you know, a much flatter, leveler surface to um, to play on. Right. And, I, and that, again, I don't, I don't disagree. And I, too, Dan, I'm not trying to be argumentative at all whatsoever. I'm just saying that. We, I, I think in, from our point of view, we didn't think that it was going to be this issue. Um, now, now it is. And so now it, I just want to make sure that we got what we designed to, um, not suggesting any solution. I'm not sure I have one, but at least we can make sure to satisfy your concern. Thanks, George. All right. Are there uh, are there uh, other uh, other questions from uh, from any of the uh, the subcommittee members? All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up kind of my my own concern with all of this. Um, I know that that both Crack and Antonazzi have you know practically been you know gavel to gavel at all of our subcommittee meetings, and I'm a little taken aback to hear that it, it wasn't conveyed to people involved in the project that you know this field was going to have some diminished capacity and some diminished use um the town's point all along in doing the high school project not just with the field but really with everything was to have it be of a standard that there is a greater wider communal use and that outside of school the auditorium the uh the lecture hall this turf field would have a greater use and a, and a greater purpose so you know i'm a little you know kind of taken aback to hear that it wasn't conveyed that this was you know this was not going to be a formal field i mean i think our whole purpose in putting in the netting and putting in the fences was to maximize the use so this field could serve as many purposes as possible with it being centrally located um you know in the middle of town so that's that's sort of that's sort of my piece. Um, before we move on, does anybody else have anything they want to add to this? Uh, 
Um, I guess I could I could ask Antonio to come in one more time and talk about whether or not he thinks that diminished capacity is what you're getting here. I don't I don't know that I don't know that Stantec feels that way based on the slope. Uh, no, I mean as far as the feel, it's it really is just an aesthetic. It's not going to impact play really, especially at that level. Um, it, it really will not. You know anything less than uh, you know, natural grass fields that are 2% all the time, that's, you know, a standard. So as far as playability or anything like that, that, that certainly will not be impacted. It really is just an aesthetic thing. Um, and, you know, I think it was mentioned before also that, you know, if it was not striped, it wouldn't be as noticeable, but obviously, you know, with the striping, it, you know, you notice it a little bit more, but yeah, no, as far as playability, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine. I, I, I beg to differ, uh, from a professional standpoint. Okay. You know, two percent on a grass field because grass has way more friction than than the turf does. Uh, the playability difference is going to be very easy to spot. I mean, I'm just going to kick a ball from the top of that crown; it's going to roll down the hill. Understood, but we're also not, you know not going back to the use here but you know you it is a, a u10 multi-purpose field right um we're not talking about a college field or, or a high school you know formal field so and i know that you know we want to have them all be perfect obviously but um we just you know we didn't have you know that option here to make it be perfectly symmetrical unfortunately well i i think we did have the option it was just never communicated to us well, I think I think that communication, you know, needed to happen uh, when the when the original design for the school was was being done, and that was not that was certainly not the the case back at that time, um, because you know there are there are underground features that would have had to been impacted, you know, drainage structures and you know driveways, things would have pitched a completely different way if that was you know the direction we were heading here. And I think again, you know, when when the decision was made to go with the turf here, we you know we had some, you know, we had some adversities uh, along all the sides that we had to we had to tend to. So, so right. Antonio, can you just clarify one, one more thing for me? Sure. What is um again? What is the difference between a, a general use field, like you said, and and it and it turning into at the quote unquote last second uh, an athletic field? What what is well, the difference? I, I I was you know I think from a you know from a use standpoint, if you, if this was not to be striped and it was going to just be used uh, for gym class or for practice, then you know at that point I I don't see you know could because you don't know exactly what what Sport, which way you're heading, which way you're going, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter that much if it's, you know, below a certain percentage. So that's kind of what I was getting at. Um, right, but it was discussed. It was discussed many times going back, whenever I can't remember how long ago, that we wanted the turf field, like Chairman Llewellyn just stated, that we wanted this field to be used at the evening for for the youth teams. And on the weekend for the youth teams, that was the goal all along. It's why we made the gym bigger. It's why we made the auditorium bigger. It's why we put a lecture hall in here is because we wanted that use for the whole community. We've been talking about that for years. Uh, the goal here was always to get a playing field on that turf field. We weren't just going to build a turf field only for the PE kids to use between 730 and 2 o'clock. The taxpayers paid for that field and their little kids team should be able to play on it on the weekend nights and on the weekends. That was the goal all along. Yeah, I agree with that as well, Ken. Uh, this is Bob DiLorenzo. Uh, Antonio, I'm not, I'm not sure who you are. I'm not sure I've ever met you before, but it, what, what these guys are saying, Alan and, and Mr. Poison, is exactly correct. I mean, and, and also I'd like to point out something. Commu listening and communication is key. Why are we getting this information right now? Well, because it, it came up as a question um, in the recent past. So you weren't going to tell us, or what no, no, was no, going to no, happen no. if it didn't come up as a question? No, 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 no. 
No, the, the, there, was, there was a question slash a concern that came up, and I believe Mr. Poison was the first to initiate it um, in the most recent past. And so we wanted to make sure that we had everybody on the phone that was involved um, from the beginning to answer you the best we can. Um, and I'd just like to add that your goals have been achieved. It's the, what we're, what we're trying to say is that the, it, the design had a lot of restraints. We were still able to keep it within the um, maximum requirements for sloping. Um, the, the crown design was created because the, because the Stantec felt that was the best, least expensive way to get to the um, solution and still have a, the playing field that you bargained for. So I don't, I don't think that anything has been sacrificed. I think, you know, in, in hindsight, we're all saying, or you, you're all saying, um, and I, I went by and I just looked at it and I thought it was gorgeous. And so I guess I got sort of overwhelmed by how nice it looked and I wasn't paying attention to the grades as much as Mr. Poison has paid attention to. Um, and I respect him and, and Dan incredibly because I know their action, their interactiveness in town with the sports and so on and so forth. So, but- Yeah, no, I, sir, sir, I, I understand that. And, and I, you, again, I get that. It's a beautiful field. You, you guys done a great job, but you, the question wasn't really answered in terms of listening and communication. If people from the town and from the Board of Education are concerned and, you know, and they're bringing up questions, why now? Again, the listening and communication was not answered that I asked. We're, we're gonna, so, Bob, Paul, Paul draw me here. I think, I think what it was, Bob, was it was an assumption made by the project team, right? Thinking that because these things were in the parameters that Antonio spoke about, um, we didn't think it would raise an alarm to the committee. Um, you know, moving forward, this is um, a lesson learned for, for me. But at the time, there, there was no, there wasn't a thought to communicate anything to the committee because we didn't think that anything was, was awry, I suppose. Otherwise, we would have. Yeah, it's I'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just disappointing. That's all. Understood. So, so Paul, just to kind of summarize a few things, I think we can agree, um, you know, the townspeople amongst the subcommittee, that we had an understanding that the field that we were going to get from field turf was going to be comparable or identical to any of the other fields we've had provided to us by field turf. And then the other thing is, like I was saying, just just the disconnect that somewhere in the in the communication path of the design team, it wasn't communicated all the way down through to the sub consultants that the town from from get go for years, as Ken Poisson said, for years has had greater, wider, more broad spread plans for the you know the the you know King Street through North Parade, um, you know Vicky Soto Way you know, areas of the school, um, you know, George and Lisa can probably go back, you know, a lot of the design is configured around being able to separate the classroom spaces from the civic side. And, you know, again, like I said, just the, the intent, the use, putting in the fencing, putting in the netting, being able to have that field for maximum, you know, maximum use. It was always thought of by the townspeople that it would become a formal field and that it would have a much greater use and much greater purpose than just to be used for gym and practices. So, um, you know, I, I, I think we'll have to go through some, you know, some lessons learned and some postmortem on this. Um, you know, get that uh, get that as built survey, and uh, and see what we have. Um, I'd like to kind of get back to the. Um, you know, back to the rest of our agenda items. But again, I want to open this up. Anybody on the subcommittee have any kind of final uh, final words to say on this uh, field turf issue? Jack, are you Jack? Are you still on? Is there? Did somebody mute people? Margo, is anybody muted? Yes, people on the phone were muted. All they have to do is press star six to unmute their phones. Star six. So I think Jack had a question. I, yeah, I can. Um, Go ahead, Margo. Did Jack just say something? Okay, I can unmute everybody and try and identify 
where Jack is. In the Jack meantime, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Fredette. Well, we're trying to work through Jack's uh, situation there. Back when we were, we got a quote from uh, for this field. Why were we not informed at that time that there was two different types of field that we could possibly end up with? One for a so-so phys -so ed field and one for a more competitive field. Again, again Rich, I, 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 I can tell you that because we didn't think that what we were doing was anything wrong. There's a lot of different ways to solve a lot of different problems. And depending on perimeter grades and existing and where the field is and what town we're in and, you know, different towns have different restraints, different towns have different regulations. I, if you put all of that together, when we were going through the design process, we didn't think a crown was something that would be looked upon as a big negative. If way back in the beginning, somebody said, oh, by the way, we've got to make sure there's no crown here, then we would have tried our best to design with no crown. And if we couldn't have met that, then we would have said, sorry, but we got to have a problem. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't, we didn't think we were doing anything wrong. So therefore, we didn't get into the really nitty gritty of what we were trying to do as a solution. We thought the bigger concern was price, making the field as big as we possibly can, and then bringing on your vendor to get the field that you wanted based on what they're doing at Pinot and I, I believe Henders. So, um, you know, that's, that, that's sort of what we did. Um, I guess now in hindsight, I, I would formally apologize about that, but um, when, you, when you don't think you're doing anything wrong, then you don't think you need to ask the question. Mr. Chairman, this is Jack. Can you hear me now? I tried to dial back in. Yep, go ahead, Jack, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I apologize to everyone. I, I tried a few times in a few different ways. I just want to say that one, um, it's been referenced a few times tonight that this was only a field for a PE class. Well, I mean, P class is a big portion of what we do. It's the only field, only outdoor space we have for PE class. It's also going to be used by our band when they can perform again in our marching band so they can eliminate taking buses to Pender's Field. So even though it was only a PE field, there's a lot more use it's going to get. And I still, I know Mr. Poisson asked the question, I think he can. I don't understand the difference between a PE field and another field. So, Um, it certainly seems like more than a 2% grade, and I agree with Mr. Poisson and Mr. Ferdas that there was no discussion about any other option um, when it came to designing the field. And I know the field was such to be as large as it can, but that shouldn't affect the size of the crown that's in the, in the optical center of the field. All it does is change the surface area of the turf. Thank you. Okay, um, so again, um, but glad we got Jack's kind of questions, comments covered. Um, are there any other kind of last remarks on this before we uh, get back to the uh, agenda and uh, get through with the, uh, the balance of the meeting? Okay, at this point, I'm going to um, go to uh agenda item number five which is the um the turner change orders and we'll start going through the, the turner items so tim excuse me for a moment chairman this is paul drummy i just ahead, wanted paul. to give the committee i wanted to give the committee an update on on cor 276 brf programming um bruce jackson spoke with chairman llewellyn and chris Timiak. Uh, the Friday before last, and he is in the process of drafting a letter for the committee. So we will not be voting on COR 276 tonight. All right, thank you, uh, thank you, Paul. Before I turn it over to uh, to Tim for items uh, 288 and 289, I do want to thank uh, both Antonazzi and uh, Antonio for being with us and fielding our questions and addressing our concerns. Um, definitely appreciated, and uh, 
let's let's move forward and uh hope that that issue uh issue resolves itself via that uh that as built survey so uh tim i'll turn it over to uh to you now following along to the agenda brings us to um cor 288 okay thank you chairman uh first change order i have for tonight is cor 288 this is um, in relation to the rooftop MEP coordination. Um, within the building B, the coordination within the building required additional duct work to be uh, run on the roof, as well as the relocation of some of the air handling units. Uh, what that required was additional uh, roof blocking for duct supports. Um, you see several different tickets tracking each one of these pieces for duct supports, as well as a uh, DUCI quote for a additional linear footage of condo no, but I'm, I'm still um, with a order. um can, uh, if you can people on the phone please uh please mute your phones i see a lot of callers that now have uh now have active uh active green lights so again if you're not speaking please uh get your phones muted to cut down on the feedback thank you okay thank you sounds a bit better um, so total change order. Did you hear that, uh, Chairman? Is that description okay? Yes. Yeah. I, we caught uh, we caught most of it, and so the uh, dollar value amount on that is uh, ten thousand two hundred and two dollars. Yes, sir. Mr. Fredette, motion to accept. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fredette. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions, comments, discussion concerning this COR item? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Hearing none, chair votes aye, motion carries unanimously. That'll bring us to number 289. Okay, change order number 289 um, is in reference to uh, two previous CORs that were brought forward. Um, this is a reconciliation of COR 247 and of COR 245 um, over at the auxiliary gym. This is the flooring that was changed uh, where it was originally gonna be a refinished wood flooring um, and turned over to a rubber tile floor. Um, total credit in this reconciliation to the town of Stratford is $14,324. Mr. Chairman, motion to accept. Second, Susan Lance. All right, Chairman go ahead, Paul uh, go ahead, Paul Drummy. Yep. Oh, Tim, can you clarify that this is a poured rubber surface, not a, a rubber tile? Is that is that? I'm um, sorry. This is a Lisa. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a rubber tile, I believe. No, no, it's a poured. It's a poured rubber surface. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, John. Oh, yep. Yeah, Eighteen. Yep. I see it here. Poor seal. Yep. It is a rubber. Right. Thank you. Right, it's it's technically it's padded and then it's a fluid applied top. Thank you. Right. I do not know if it's made out of rubber, but it is it is continuous and fluid applied. Okay, excellent. Motion been made by Mr. Fredette, seconded by Mrs. Lance. Are there any other comments, questions, discussion concerning this item? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, chair votes aye, motion carries unanimously. And uh, Tim, take us through the uh, the dashboard and your uh, your look ahead. Thank you. Okay, so the, the dashboard and the look ahead were distributed uh, with the updated link by uh, Paul this afternoon. Um, so I'll hit on a couple key components in here. And uh, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to stop me or ask those questions. Um, so over the month of September, a couple of accomplishments was the AV equipment installation was substantially complete. Um, they're currently in field testing right now, uh, fine tuning the system and getting it ready for owner training. Um, the turf field was also substantially completed. Right now we are waiting for the final uh, ball netting um, and the 20 foot posts are the last piece. The fencing was finished today. And then we have the GMAX tests and some other testing of the field uh, waiting to be scheduled this week. Um, over in phase three of the roof deck um, change order, uh, the, the safety plan uh, was coordinated and approved in the month of September. Um, on Friday and this morning, we installed the safety lifelines up on the high roof, um, and we will proceed forward with setting up some scaffolding to 
uh, reduce the fall exposure for the lower roofs uh, here in early um, October. Um, the underground plumbing and the slab on grade infills over in phase three have, uh, have been done. So the recessed floor, uh, you could see in the photo there in the, uh, in the initial gym space has been filled. All the under slab plumbing has been done and those infills are complete as well. And then the final is uh, we have gotten the stair opening has been opened and the metal stair has been put in. We are currently, um, we've got an RFI to make a change to the securing of the stair stringers and then we'll pour the concrete infills on those pans. Um, moving down to safety, I have no additional safety instance to report. Um, on the critical activities, we have the balancing commissioning. Uh, we will be starting some of that work. It's scheduled for October 7th to begin some of the commissioning with the exception of the VRF system. Um, the VRF system, currently we have LG techs from Korea as well as from Georgia. Um, they have access to the system. They're troubleshooting and going through a lot of testing. I'm doing firmware updates. We have two calls each week to go through VRF system in current status. Um, on the, uh, on the uh, existing deck right now, where we are with the existing deck in phase 3A is trying to finalize the pricing that was received. We did uh, have the order of magnitude approved. Um, that order of magnitude is, is um, tracking higher than where it came in originally. Um, and again, there's some causes of that. Uh, one being the production for uh, removing the roof material itself, the cover board, the membrane, and the roof insulation, um, the production factor associated with using it and removing it by machine versus removing it manually, and then adding in the safety lifeline tie-off um, has drastically reduced the production uh, of removing that roof um, to follow the proper safety protocols, um, as well as the, the time frame um, for this current delay uh, I, we talked with the order of magnitude about a three month or a 12 week delay. Right now, the delay is looking uh, closer to 16 weeks. Um, and that includes starting the ripping of that roof this week. Um, so we still need to sort through some last minute pricing options, as well as determine whether or not we want to release them um, as, a, uh, as a lump sum proposal or release them on a time basis to remove that roof. Uh, so we have some more conversations to have on that. Uh, the other items here, the aluminum rails, the exterior signage, uh, exterior signage over on the North Parade side is scheduled for 10-12. Uh, they will be setting up the scaffold and starting to install that signage on the exterior of the gymnasium on 10-12. And then the uh, slope at the north and south roofs, uh, we've confirmed that that needs a quarter inch per foot. Uh, the existing steel is sloped an eighth per foot, so there will be a change order for additional built-up insulation in that area. Uh, we are looking to minimize that by uh, minimize the change by um, trying to maintain the through wall flashing that's there at the current uh, gymnasium wall. Um, looking down here under the schedule, again, you'll see the substantial completion or the owner move-in dates, the 1030 to the 219 is that 16 weeks. And then site improvements, as you see here, the last line under there is uh, out to 430 of 2021. Um, and that's based on the asphalt plants um, typically will shut down at Thanksgiving and will reopen on the 15th of, of April. So we have that currently planned to happen out in April to pave that north lot. Uh, financially, again, uh, within the GMP, financially, we are in a good position. Um, you talked about that earlier, uh, similar to what we have done in previous phases. Uh, for the November meeting, we are planning to go through the uncommitted funds within our GMP and return to the town um, as we did in previous phases for your use, these funds that uh, we are comfortable that we will no longer need to complete the work. Um, and then again, you can go through executive summary as well as go through the current challenges, but our biggest challenge right now is that uh, phase 3A building seat deck uh, replacement. All right, a lot of information. Does anybody have any questions for me? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I do. Go ahead, Councilman Poisson. Tim, what's the timeline on the uh, ball netting around the turf field? Um, right now, that submittal, I believe I heard it was returned today. Jen, can you correct me if I'm wrong? I think I heard it was, it was back to us today for some revisions uh, that had to go back um, to this subcontractor to be resubmitted. So right now, I think we're planning on that work towards the end of October and into November before we get that ball netting here on site. And then how long will it take once it gets on site? 
the installation should be probably under, it'll probably be about a week. They'll bring a crane in to set those posts. Um, and again, that detail as we were out there in the in the field, uh, talking about that they're working through the detail of those posts and the sleeves to make sure those fit and they're snug. So that's in the works as well. Uh, but once that gets worked out, then they'll have to either modify the caps before they come out here, uh, which is what we, we believe will be done. It's not gonna be done here on site. Then we'll bring a crane out here to set each one of those posts. Um, at that time. So I would think it's about a week to be able to set that and get it ready to go. Mr. Chairman, can I ask another question? Yes, Councilman, continue. Yeah, Tim, if I may, um, how come the timing wasn't coordinated a little better so that the netting was already here so that as soon as the turf and the fence was up that the netting could have gone immediately up also? There were a couple iterations of the submittal for that ball netting, um, and, and that really comes back to Eagle Fence and Guardrail. Um, and I'll be quite honest that we've had some issues getting them to respond um, in a timely manner to be able to get that. Uh, but we have been pushing them. All right, Ken, you all set? I guess we have to be. Thank you. Any uh, other questions for uh, for Tim? All right, um, Tim, did you cover the look ahead as well, or do you want people to just kind of review that at their leisure? Yes. Um, I, can I step back one second, um, Mr. Persan? I just want to make sure that we, you know, with the field, the field is actually is done earlier than we expected it to be. Um, that was originally planned to be done for the 31st of October was the turnover of that field. Um, as we talk in the field right now, we're looking to get that turned over for use, not having the 20 foot ball netting, but uh, have it ready for use by next Monday, the 12th. Um, that is if we can get the testing completed by field turf. Um, so we are about a month before uh, the original plan turnover of that field. Um, so again, I don't think we're gonna hit that unfortunately, um, which again, you know, we'll take the, the 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 responsibility for that and the ownership of that because you know we haven't been able to get, like I said, the fence contractor to to get in the information required. Um, but I don't think we're too far off the original plan on that. Um, as for the look ahead, um, Mr. Uh, Chairman Llewellyn, uh, the look ahead is really going to be over the next four to six weeks, all about uh, removing the roof in Phase Three A and the replacement of that decking and the roof. So the deck has been released. You'll see that in here for an arrival uh, the week of October 19th, um, which will start the, the installation of the metal deck on that high roof. And then we'll go from the high roof there over to the south roof, which is over the, the old um, boys locker room. Then they'll go over the west, which is the old entrance, and then over to the north. And you'll see that as you read through week by week of the six week look at. All right, thank you. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Moving us along, that brings us to um, item seven on the uh, photovoltaic. Um, Paul, I'm going to turn this uh, part of the uh, the meeting over to you, and uh, let's uh, move forward. All right. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, before I get started on this, committee members, I just want to give you a brief update on uh, what else is going on on an owner-driven uh, contract. We are responsible for the playground, which started today and is due to be completed the second week of November. So oh that is moving forward. On, on to photovoltaic, um, basically what I did here, ladies and gentlemen, is, is, I, is I copied and pasted what was on the town website to, to show you what is ha happening simultaneously to, the, to this project and what the town is doing to, um, to be mindful of their operational costs and to reduce them. In, in in the way of photovoltaic and other measures, energy efficient measures. Um, I go on to say how it is it is the committee's it, it is still available to the town to move forward and, and do another phase to this project. Um, doing so, we, we would need to to accept a proposal from Antonazzi, whom would hire a consultant to design. A, a photovoltaic system for the high school. We would formulate documents, get a, a document review up at the state. Once that's approved, they would give us permission to go out to bid. We would have Turner bid out the project, and then Turner would 
manage it as they've been managing all the other subs on this particular project. And then I, I go on to say the other option would be to remove this scope of work from this project. And I kind of touched base on this a little bit earlier with Dan Smith and, and have this be a part of the, the new solar PV consultant scope of work. Uh, there, there is cost savings in doing that alone. And I just wanted to, to let the committee know that. I think between the markups we would have to go through on this particular project that's open on top of if we do go forward and, and, and have another phase, what's happening is, is we, are, we are extending the timeline of the project before it's closed out. But what does that mean when it comes to the grant reimbursement? So that 11% that the state has on all the reimbursement that they've given us to date does not come back to the town until the project is completely closed out. So that is, that is one of the pieces of the puzzle in the committee's decision making whether to move forward with this project within this pro with the PV within this project or take it out of the project and have the new solar consultant take the scope of work. Um, I'll continue to work with John and, and John Casey and Chris Timniak up at the state and, and understand what they want from CREC and, and how, what other information I can provide the committee to make an educated decision. Any questions? No, Paul, just to be um just to be clear to everyone in what we're looking to do, what we're really talking about doing is kind of taking the ability to to bond those dollars under this project and in and, and in effect give that money back to the town so that it can be used for the more the more broad multi school photovoltaic. That's right, Chairman. So right now you you appropriated a bucket of money. Um, within that appropriation, you have a line item set aside for this particular portion of the project. Um, and I talked about optics earlier and, and how perhaps the town would want to, you know, protect this bucket of money and, and hand it back to the town so they could use it for just that because this was a big conversation in the beginning of the project and there was there was a big push for this. Um, so giving back that money to use toward the actual project on the high school just through a, a different avenue of project management, um, I think optically would look good. Paul, is, so this time, it. Paul, is this time sensitive for decisions tonight? No, it is not. And Mr. Chairman, I respectfully request we move on then. Okay, Paul. Thank you for the uh, the update and um, and the report. I'm sure you'll continue working on this with um, the administration, Chris Timniak, and uh, whoever else needs to be involved. So keep us posted as this uh, plan comes together. Um, under under item E, our next uh, regular meeting is scheduled for November 2nd, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. Again, pencil in, special meeting if needed would be October 19th, 2020. We already covered item nine. Um, under item 10, new business is our 2021 meeting schedule. Um, Paul, do we need to um, motion and act on that this evening or can we just kind of put it out there for informational purposes? So I would, so I, I don't think you need to vote on it this month, Chairman, but I would defer to Aileen and Margo to what their feelings are on the matter. All right, and again, I'm pretty sure this needs to dovetail into the current Public Works and Building Needs Committee scheduling. Yes, and uh, Alan, I can tell you that Public Works already approved that at our five o'clock meeting prior to this. And uh, I'm assuming that building needs is going to do the same thing. So if we wanted to vote on it just to keep everything uh, the way it's been, we should just do that right now and get it over with. Understood. I'll take a motion to accept and approve the 2021 meeting schedule. Motion, motion to approve. Second. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.
I don't even think I'm going to ask for opposition on this one. Chair votes aye, motion carries unanimously. Um, that brings us to item two, the uh, portable classroom trailer. Um, Paul, just kind of give a quick uh, quick background on this. Sure. Uh, the long and the short, Chairman, committee members, is we were set to have the committee approve um, demolishing this by Turner for the for the amount of around fifty thousand um, dollars. The town stepped in and and. And what I feel and the project team feels it was a smart move because it is a it was an expensive investment that the town wanted to save. Uh, in turn, they they chose to move these trailers off site and set them at different locations in the town to be used. Um, so the the cost to do, to demobilize and move these trailers to the respective spots was one hundred three thousand twenty three seventy two. The there's portions of this invoice that will be presented as a change order up in the state. And I will I will fight for as much reimbursement as I can. All right, under, understood. And then there's a very detailed breakdown and series of invoices, as well as emails from uh, Mo McCarthy over at Public Works and the town in, intending that as these trailers were part of the project, the, they're relocating to their final homes um, should kind of be part of the project as well, and uh, this this would end the chain of custody for these trailers. So I'll entertain a motion to approve this in the amount of $103,023.72. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve. Thank you, Second, Mr. Fred. Second, Mrs. Lance. Thank you, Mrs. Lance. Lance. Got, uh, got you there on the second. Um, any questions, comments, discussion concerning this item? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, that brings us to a tree removal item, Paul. So real quick, Chairman, is this is the, the sole tree remaining on the southern property line for the high school, which um, would eventually blow leads onto the field. This was on the property. The ones we removed before were on the neighbor's property. So this is the removal cost and stump grinding for that last tree on the property line. All right, entertain a motion for this to be approved in the amount of $2,900. I will make a motion for discussion, Rich Fredette. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fredette. And Mr. Shalhoub, is your second um, still hold uh, for discussion? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, this item is now open for discussion and comment. Mr. Fredette? Mr. Chairman. Paul, why was this not included when we took down those other trees? It just seems like it would have made much more sense to do it then. Rich, I do not disagree with you one bit. So this was a tree that was within the construction fence at the time. Um, right. You know, going, going through and um, just marking all the trees that the the neighbor gave us permission to to cut down uh, my 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 blinders were on rich and that one got by me well needless to say i'm a little disappointed about all that but i will make continue to make that motion to approve and i'll motion to second bob Shalou. All right, thank you both. Um, are there other questions, comments, discussion concerning this tree removal item? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, chair votes aye, motion carries unanimously. And then the uh, last item in there, Paul, is these uh, lockdown door light shutters. Yes, thank you, Chairman. So the design team, correct, have been working with Jack Del Piano and Tabitha Cruz on, on what to cover the door lights leading into particular classrooms and, and other spaces. Uh, so on a lockdown, the teacher could release this shade to cover the door light so um, the intruder could not see within the classroom. Um, and this is for 138 roll down or um, coiled, coiled up shades that release with a string pole and come down and cover the windows, Chairman. All right. 
uh, entertain a motion to accept and approve this in the amount of $1,489. So move, Susan Lance. Second, Richard. Thank you both. Any further questions, comments, discussion concerning this item? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. And this brings us to um, item 10, which is our adjournment. Excuse me, I'd like to share one um, further piece of information. Doesn't need a vote, Lisa here. Um, so in the original design on King Street, we have four sets of incised oh, rumble strips um, set up for traffic calming. We were in discussions with Jack Casey, John Casey, I'm sorry, to both John and Jack. Um, anyway, uh, John recommended that we put this in front of the Stratford Traffic Authority. They meet every October 15th, so we will be going to discuss this with them at that time and take any recommendations that they have for that. So this is something that's always been shown in the drawings, but it's in the middle of your public road, and we want to make sure that we're doing everything in line with what the town wants. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Motion to adjourn. By Councilman Poisson, is there a second? Second, Bob Shalou. Thank you. All the all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye, and we are adjourned at 7.15. Guys, if you're on building, please stay here. We're going to start as soon as we have quorum. I am still here. I just uh, went to my phone as opposed to the... Uh, the Zoom call. Okay, thanks, Danny. Who's that, Danny sent? Yes. It is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hey, Danny. Aileen, let me know when we have quorum. Greg Cant, <clears throat> excuse me, Greg Cant's here for Caitlin Shake. Hi, Greg. Hey, Greg. Again, dynamic discussion regarding the turf field. Well, thank you. Margo, do you want me to do roll call before or after you start recording? After. Okay. Well, can. Ken's got quorum, so. Oh, okay. The, the recording is still going, so go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Aileen Marsh, Recording Secretary for Building Needs Committee. Um, Chairman Poisson, your quorum for this meeting is six, which you have in attendance for the members only. Uh, Bob DiLorenzo, Alan Llewellyn, Lam, you, Dan Semt, Greg Khan sitting in for Caitlin Shake and Ron Tickey. So you can call it to order. Okay, thank you, Aileen. You know, go ahead and leave me. Hey, good evening, everybody. I'm going to call the Building Needs Committee of October 5th, 2020, to order at 7 18 p.m. I'm Ken Poisson, 6th District Councilman and Chairman of the Building Needs Committee. The second item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. I'll take a motion to approve the September. Minutes. So move, Mr. So Chair. So okay, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item three is ongoing items. 3A is Board of Ed, A1 is Stratford High School. I'll turn it over to Chairman Alan Llewellyn. All right, thank you, Councilman Poisson. Uh, appreciate everyone uh, kind of sticking in. We had a lengthy meeting um, for the high school. Um, our biggest topic of conversation was the current status with regards to the, uh, the turf field. Um, many members wished their uh, 
their kind of frustrations with how both the pitch and how the configuration of the field is. Um, apparently there was kind of a, a disconnect, um, you know, on a couple of fronts, you know, it wasn't clearly relayed to the design team, um, you know, what the field is going to be used for and that we were looking for it to have, you know, varied uses and able to serve many purposes. And uh, the biggest bone of contention is related to this, um, this crown that was designed into the field. So we're going to get an as built survey done and see where we're at with regards to the crowning. I'm sure this item will come up again um, in the future. Um, Turner's, you know, continuing moving along with the project. Um, our budget report was presented and we discussed uh, several cost items. Um, so the first of which that I'm going to bring before building needs um, was Turner change order request number 200 and 88 and this was for sorry i'm slipping through some paperwork here this was for the mep coordination of the rooftop in the um, phase that they're currently working on um some curb changes some location changes um support coordination with regards to the construction below um, i'm going to move that we accept this in the amount of ten thousand two hundred and two dollars is there a, um, we have a motion and a second by Lom. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. Next, Alan. Uh, next Turner item was change order request number 289. This was a reconciliation of two prior change order requests concerning the flooring at the auxiliary gym. Um, as we move to a, a poured rubber um, and some other conditions, existing conditions were not as bad as previously thought to be. Um, this is actually a credit and I would move that we accept this in the credit amount of $14,324. I'll second. Okay, long Hey, is there any discussion on accepting this credit? Hi, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. Alan. Our next item was related to the final relocations of the portable classroom trailers that were used during the uh, prior construction phases of the project. There was an opportunity to demolish these or keep them. The town opted to keep them. Um, Dolling Construction um, provided us with a series of relocations. There's very detailed invoices. Um, this is definitely part of project costs. So I would move that we approve this and send this to town council with favorable recommendation in the amount of $103,023.72. I'll second. Hey, is there any discussion? Uh, Ellen is right. Uh, the town wanted to save these and they've been put to use uh, we had already paid for them and we're still using them. So it was good to get them out of the Stratford High and to use them elsewhere in town. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. Um, next, next item was for the removal of a tree that was within side the construction fence in the uh, southern border area. I would move that we accept this in the amount of two thousand nine hundred dollars. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. Um, last cost item was um, some door light shutters um, that will go at the uh, the door windows in the event of a lockdown. So providing some added uh, added security while the school is in lockdown. I would move that we accept this in the amount of one thousand four hundred eighty nine dollars. Back in Ron. Thank you. Is there any discussion? 
Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye, motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much, Al. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, thanks to the uh, Building Needs Committee members who dialed in early and observed the uh, proceedings from the subcommittee meeting. Just helps to keep us moving along. Thanks, everyone. Okay, item uh, A2 is uh, open work orders for the Board of Ed, which as always have been emailed to us ahead of time. Does anybody have any questions uh, for Rich or Danny? Okay, item B is uh, general buildings, town buildings, uh, the open work orders, building repairs on uh, general town buildings. Again, emailed out to us ahead of time as always. Does anybody have any questions for Danny on town buildings? Hey, item B2 is Booth Park. Uh, I don't believe there's any updates on Booth Park. Is there, Danny? No, just regular maintenance. We're going through all the boilers now with the heating systems, making sure they're, you know, everything's cleaned and working properly. Uh, we just changed some outside lights on the dance hall um, on the building. We changed them all to LEDs, but nothing major at this point. That's good. I think slowly, slowly but surely we're getting LED lights uh, all throughout town, which is a good thing. Danny, do you have a question? No, I just wanted to thank uh, Dan and his crew. There was some garbage that was up behind the uh, the Astronomical uh, Society's building up there, and they removed the garbage quickly. But more importantly, um, just uh, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from people in the neighbor neighborhood on how clean and um, really how um, beautiful Booth has looked over these last several months. Uh, you know, the flowers uh, in the garden there, as well as the building maintenance and everything else, has just improved significantly. So. You know, when you're used to hearing bad things, um, you know, this is a, a positive thing. And it, it really is a showcase for us in Stratford, that park. And there's a lot of people that are up there, especially during this pandemic and these days. So um, my hat's off to their, to to your team, Dan, and to uh, all, the, all the employees that work up there. And uh, they just do a nice job. So thank you. Thank you. I agree also, Dan, good job. You and Mo and uh, and Chad, uh, you know, really the face of the town is, you know, the first thing people see is what you guys are keeping uh, track of for all of us and, and improving. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Ken. All right, item four is new business. Uh, Aileen uh, emailed out to us the 2021 meeting schedule. Uh, it's the same as this year. It's the first Monday. We'll immediately follow Stratford High as long as they have to keep meeting. Uh, which is going to be up until the end of April or May now, uh, as you heard during the Stratford High meeting. Uh, the first Monday of the month, except for three months, two because of holiday and one because of the Mayor's Golf Tournament. So it's basically the same schedule we've had the last few years. And when Stratford High doesn't have to meet any more, then we will start earlier. Um, so I'll take a motion to approve the 2021 meeting schedule. I'll move. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item five is our next regular meeting is uh, Monday, November 2nd, the first Monday. Uh, a special meeting, if needed, it would be Monday, October 19th, but none of that was mentioned during the Stratford High meeting, so it doesn't look as of right now we will need one. The last item, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Hey, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody, I'd like to thank you for your time. As always, uh, Chair Votsai, motion carries unanimously. We are adjourned at 7.28 p.m. Thank you very much. Thanks. Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. And Yankees. And Yankees. <laughs>